Hi, I'm Anthony Chapman and I'm a tutor here at Point Break Music School. I've got over 20 years industry experience as a producer, engineer, mixer and composer, working with the likes of Franz Ferdinand and Claxons. And you're watching Nine Lives of Ableton. If you're new to making electronic music, these videos should give you an overview of how to get started using Live and an idea of what it's capable of. If you're experienced with other platforms but new to Live, you'll probably find these videos really useful as well. Okay, so in this last video, I just want to apply a few finishing touches to my mix, get the track mastered, and then get it uploaded to SoundCloud. So the first thing I want to show you are a couple of things that I've left to the very end of the mix. The first thing is I want to have a listen to the relationship between the drums and the bass. So let's have a quick listen. Now the bass drum has a lot of low frequencies in it and obviously so does the bass. And sometimes this can get a little bit messy. So there's a technique we can use to try and give the bass and the bass drum each its own space. And that's side chain compression. So what I'm going to do is... This is my uh, rolling bass track here. I'm going to get a compressor device and drop that into the track, okay? Now, you may also notice if you go back to the session view that I've got this track here, which is the Ghost Kick. And basically, this is just a bass drum playing on each beat. If I turn it up, you can hear it. Okay? It's just playing on each beat, and I'm not using it in the mix. I'm just using it as a trigger for sidechain compression. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the bass track, go into my compressor plugin, and if I click on this little toggle here, it shows us the sidechain part of the, the plugin. Turn on sidechain and set my audio for the sidechain to come from the ghost kick. So what's happening here is the compressor is receiving audio directly from that ghost kick track. So even if the drums aren't playing, if I send a bass drum out of that track, any compressors that have the sidechain set to run from that ghost kick track will be sidechained on each beat, okay? So now if I run this and I tweak my settings on the compressor here, you'll see the bass is starting to be compressed by the ghost kick. So I'm just gonna solo that. So you can hear that duck on every beat. So now, if I, I can turn that up a bit in the mix, and it will live a lot more happily with the rest of the mix. So that's the first thing I wanted to look at, and then I think really the finishing touch for my mix is, I've got quite a lot of drum tracks here. If we look, it goes from here all the way to this one, okay? So I'm just gonna uh, color them all red, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group them. Now we can do this by right clicking and going to group tracks. And now effectively we've got this track here, the group, which is like a folder in which all of these tracks are contained. I'm going to rename that drums group. Okay. And then this little toggle button here will fold it up. So you can see all of my drum tracks are contained within this track. And what this enables me to do is do processing across all of those drum tracks that are within this group. So I'm going to get the trusty glue compressor. And I'm going to start to wind the threshold down a bit, start to get it to compress. I'm going to solo the drum so I can hear what it's doing. And I want to make this really extreme because I want to do some parallel compression. So you can hear that, that's like... I would never use that as it is there, that's very extreme. But I'm gonna mix that with the drier signal. Yeah, that gives us a nice bit of aggression. That's flat. So you can hear it's just a little bit more aggressive. Turn my soft clip on as well. Great, let's hear everything. Great. Yeah, I think that's sounding pretty good. Okay, so let's head over to our master track. Now, 
I've got a glue compressor on the master, so everything is going through the glue compressor. It's using this mastering catch peaks preset, which is part of the library, and that's been on for quite a long time. I do tend to like, if I'm going to use compression on the master bus, I like to get it in relatively early. But what I also want to do now is I just want to apply a little bit of EQ after this. Now I'm kind of happy with my mix. So I just want to add a little bit of sparkle at the top end. And I just want to shave off some of the very, very low frequencies. And I'm going to open up my larger view so I can get an idea of what's going on. And then I just want to have a, like a boost about 100 hertz. Yeah, that's, that's like kind of what I'm looking for. A little bit more life. And then the last a bit of the chain for me is the limiter, okay? And the limiter is going to enable me to just make this track nice and loud. Now, if I was mixing for real, if I was mixing for a client off one of my own productions, I would do a mix without the limiter, but I would also do one with the limiter if I wanted to play it out in a club, test it out, play it on a big PA system, something like that. Um, sometimes as well, if you're mixing for somebody else, you might want to deliver a, a little test mix with a limiter on it for a client to listen to. Not too much, just enough so that it's loud enough so that if they've been listening to something commercially mastered beforehand, it doesn't instantly sound much, much quieter, okay? So I'm just going to turn the gain up on the limiter here. Yeah, and that, for these purposes, that's enough. I can just see it starting to limit there, not by very much at all. If I turn it off, see it's just added a bit of volume. Great, okay. So I'm going to go back to the arrange view and I'm going to set my locators for the whole of my track. And I'm going to add a little bit at the end in case there's any uh, reverb or delay tails. And then I'm going to go to uh, File and Export Audio and Video. And this is the window where I set my options for exporting my mix. So Render Track, I want the master track to mix. So that's basically everything that's playing in the mix. And the audio type, I'm going to export as a WAV file. And I'm going to export it at 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. So that's CD format. And uh, I'm also going to upload it to SoundCloud. Now you notice I've got this option turned on. This is a cool thing in live. You mix out your track and then you can automatically upload it to SoundCloud. So I'm going to click OK now. Okay, so there we are. Our track has finished uploading to SoundCloud and we've got a link there. And if I click on that, we can see... Here we go. There's the sound uploaded and it's currently still being processed. Hopefully that won't take too long to process. And there we have it, uploaded on SoundCloud. So, I hope these videos have really given you a, a nice introduction into Live9 and why it's such a really fantastic creative platform for making music and manipulating audio. Many thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. 
You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor. He downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work. So basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on a course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.